What is an MX record and what do they actually do? Your domain name has a bunch of settings on the back of the domain name and they basically tell internet traffic where to go. You've got a few different types of records and those different types of records have different jobs. Okay, I'm setting up Google Workspace. What should my MX records be? My Gmail was working perfectly fine, but I transferred my domain to HostGator and my Gmail broke. Well, this happens all the time. And thankfully, if you go to our channel and search DNS, we've got a number of different videos helping you sort out your mail issues if right now your emails are not working. Right from the basic troubleshooting steps to see what might be wrong, down to an in-depth guide on how to actually implement both DNS, SPF, DKIM and DMARC, which are all of the anti-spam policies that you need configured inside your DNS to make sure that your emails get delivered and don't go to spam and to stop people pretending to be you on the internet, potentially scamming your staff or your customers. Now, someone's asked the very specific question of what should the MX records be? Let's have a look at those and I'll give you a bit of an explanation of what MX records actually are. The easiest way to find Google's MX records is literally to type in workspace MX records and open up the Google help guide. Cool, we have a couple of different versions of MX records for Google workspace. And this depends on when you actually signed up to workspace in the first place. So here you can see that if you've signed up since April, 2023, you're able to just set one Google workspace MX record in your DNS settings. If it was before 2023, and this would have shown up inside your or Google Workspace setup guide, you'll need to set up multiple records here. Now, what is an MX record and what do they actually do? Your domain name has a bunch of settings on the back of the domain name and they basically tell internet traffic where to go. You've got a few different types of records and those different types of records have different jobs. The A record or the www record are records that point to your website and they tell the internet where is your website hosted? If someone wants to type in the website in Google or into the URL of their browser, where should they actually go? And that's generally gonna to point to a web server somewhere. It might be on cPanel, it might be on Wix or Squarespace, and you're probably gonna be punching in an IP address or maybe a hosted hostname, which is basically a, like a virtual address for your website. MX records are your mail records. It actually stands for Mail Exchanger. And what they point to is where are your emails hosted? So where should someone go to send you an email? And that is usually gonna be Microsoft or Google or another email provider, sometimes also on your web host. But your MX records dictate what happens. Now, there are other records on a domain name like text records. They are used to add additional information to your domain name. Verifying that you own it is the most common use for a text record, but it can also be used for things like anti-spam, SPF, DKIM, basically dictating who can send and receive mail on your behalf of your domain name. But I wanna talk about your MX records and why do we need multiple MX records? Well, in the past, we had challenges with IT infrastructure in that from time to time, a provider would go down, something would change, or for redundancy, we would need to have multiple servers to make sure that things were kept up and online. Now, the way to get around that when you were setting up your MX records is if your primary mail server was down, there would be backup mail servers. And those backup mail servers would be there to receive the email if for some reason the primary mail server decided to go down. And for the most part, that worked great. You know, mail servers don't go down all that often, but just in case the settings were there if they needed to. But these days, Google have so many redundancies built into their platforms. Effectively, you only really need one MX record to be configured if you're on a newer account because Google takes care of all the extra redundancy in the background. So the only difference between having five mail records here if you've got a slightly older workspace account and one mail record if you've got a new account is the age of your workspace account. Either way, it doesn't really make much difference, but Google have made it simpler for anyone with a new account to just use one mail record. It is important that you follow the correct instructions. And so it wouldn't hurt to go inside your Google workspace account in the admin panel go to the setup guide, and from the setup guide, just triple check what Google is instructing you to do if there's any ambiguity on which one of these you should be using. If you need more help with what we've covered in this video, IT Genius provides support services to businesses all over the world with problems just like this. Click the link below to get started.